everybody. Yes, I'm still pulling stuff from the box. There are a lot of books, fewer than there were, but let's see what we can find. Let's see if I can find something that's not a golden book that I can tell by touch next to these thinner gloves from Fan of the Gourmet. Ooh, whoa, that's a big one. Yes. King and his dog's dream. Yes, I can read upside down. Interesting. Yes. From Lamplight Read Easy Books. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Not familiar with these. Hmm. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. If I approve the video, you already know this is another book courtesy of Sasami-chan. If I didn't approve the video, you know now. Today's selection is from Lamplight Read Easy Books, Kim and His Dog's Dreams. Two stories written by Jane McMichael, illustrated by Richard Hook. Two stories. Hmm. And a very nice cover. It kind of reminds me of uh, Treasure Island. Yeah, the pirates in the background, it's very Treasure Island, but boy, dog, and two people in similar outfits makes me think of Tintin. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Ooh, nice opening spread. Whoa, you're right. This is some really nice art. All right. The book doesn't seem that long. I'm wondering how long two stories are. I think we may still have to keep them as a single recording. Published in the USA by Lamplight Publishing. Mm. Bound and printed in Milan, Italy. Copyright 1972. Yes. Yeah. So anything racist, sexist, or in any way politically incorrect, remember this is 1972. And it's not our points of view or our opinions. Kim is sailing his boat on the pond. Suddenly, the boat begins to sink. Kim's dog, Barney, is asleep. When he sleeps, he dreams exciting adventures. Yep. The boy is looking at his poor ship sinking in the pond and the dog sleeping in the foreground. And there's two other kids off in the distance. Yes, and just to be clear, this is a toy ship <laughs> sitting... In a pond, everyone is fine. This is the dog's dreams, as stated in the title. As the ship keels over and sinks, the two shipwrecked mariners hit the water. Kim cannot swim. Will Barney reach him in time? Lucky for you that I'm here, thinks Barney, as he drags Kim onto the sand. They are very hungry, but how will they find food? Barney's nose is the answer. This is this is all very very cute. The art style is really well done. I mean, it's look how crisp that is, and all the style. Mm-hmm. And very minimalistic in terms of outlines. You don't see the black outlines that you normally see in drawings. Mm -hmm. Most of the outlines are to accent wrinkles in the clothing, and they're usually a um, darker shade of the same color. Barney leads Kim straight to a steaming pot of stew. It smells good, says Barney. They are so hungry that they don't stop to think whose food they are eating. Yo! Black Jack and his pirate band are angry to see Kim and Barney eating their stew. Well, who wouldn't be? Yeah, so she have, like, they had to work hard for that stew? Mm-hmm. Barney fights bravely and escapes. Kim is carried off. Help! Save me, he cries. Hmm. A little boy in distress. Well, this is a boy and his dog story, and it's the dog's dream, so the dog should be the hero. It is his dream. Hmm. And just to point out, Timmy's fallen down a well. You know, the boy is allowed to be in distress, especially if the other is a dog. Yeah, and I just noticed this is very four-panel comic style, except they're uh, more of the square four panel which reminds me a lot of a comic um online that i used to read that i would like to get back to someday mega tokyo the first several comics were actually in a very similar format mm -hmm. barney follows the pirates to the bay where their ship lies at anchor he sees his young master pushed into a boat 
and he waits for the right moment. Don't you think the pirates would have stopped to eat their stew first, or at least pack it with them? Yeah. Like a true hero, and with no thought for his own safety, he plunges into the sea. There is no sign of the pirates as he climbs on board through one of the gun ports. One, fortunately, that didn't have a gun sticking out of it. Yeah, a.k.a. cannon. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because of what's happening in the next page. With many a curse, the black-bearded captain sets Kim to work polishing the cannon. Kim is thrown into the rope locker, and to his joy, there is faithful Barney. Kim doesn't like the ship's biscuit. Eat it up, it's nice and hard, growls Barney. Arf, the dog would find hard tasty because bone. And now in the next panel we get the explanation of how we have biscuits. Barney has made friends with the cook. He goes to get some stew. Also, is it just me or does that one picture have an odd thing to it with Barney's mouth and the biscuit? It looks like the mouth is closed almost and the biscuit underneath it. Yeah, I'm thinking what's going on is if you look at the kids, it's the teeth being shown, so I'm guessing this is the teeth, a very simplified version of the front teeth. Being shown, but it does look a little odd. Mm -hmm. On the way back, the ship rolls and Barney nearly drops the stew. As Kim enjoys his plate of stew, the ship sets sail. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there would be higher priority than sneaking food, especially since Kim was just kidnapped. He's not weakened and starving yet. He's still at relatively full strength. I isn't it safer to escape while you're still at anchor instead of out to sea? Yeah. But that wouldn't be as epic. No. Nah. But trouble looms ahead for the pirates in the shape of the king's navy. I just remember like a bunch of interesting stuff. I remember hearing about the fact that a lot of pirates were actually hired by the king's navy. Yeah, and attacked ships from other kingdoms and then tended to get robbed on the way back. Mm. Get below and fetch up the cannonballs, Captain Blackjack shouts angrily to Kim. When did Kim get back on deck? He was thrown in the rope locker. Yeah. We must help the Navy, says Kim. Barney spots some rotten floorboards. He rolls a cannonball over to the worm-eaten timbers. Now Kim understands. Kim drops a cannonball from the top of the stairs and holes the ship. Holes the ship? That's what it says. Don't they mean put holes in the ship? I mean, a rather large one, and that that's kind of a... I don't know how to phrase it. Uh, I want to say stupid, but I don't know. Foolhardy, perhaps. That's the word. When they find the ship is sinking, the pirates fling themselves over the side. Come back, you cowards, yells their captain. I'll, I'll skin you alive. But the pirates want to save themselves, even if it means being taken prisoner. And what of their treasure? Barney is the only one who knows its hiding place. How? Oh, it's a dream. Yes. That, that's the key to a lot of this. It's a dream. Yes. The wicked pirates watch the sailors dig up their treasure chest. No wonder Barney looks happy. All that lovely treasure belongs to him. It's Ooh. a lot of biscuits. Mm-hmm. And a belt or collar oh. and a leash and a ball and a shoe. Yeah. Good dog treasure. Quite. I'm just going to say it's a dream. I was just about to make a question. <laughs> no, no. Uh, all right. And we're going to reiterate... This is from the 70s. Also, there was like a nice bit of the cover art in the last page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the exact bit, yeah, picture. Yeah, I would say a bit. <laughs> it's just a crop, the cover is just a crop version of the picture on that page. Mm-hmm. All right, second story, white magic. Never mind the smoke, Kim. Barney has fallen asleep again. When Barney sleeps, he dreams Kim is in danger. Then Barney comes to the rescue. You saw that for the last one. Hmm. Yes, but now they're confirming. They're all going to be like this. Mm. And 
The smoke is because Kim has a burn pile with leaves and such. And I really do like the style of this artist. It's very nice. It feels modern. <laughs> That's like the way I would put it. It feels like something someone would do on a modern system, like on a computer and stuff like that. Because there's, there's a certain feel to certain styles that you can see when, oh, someone painted this on the computer or someone used this tool. Let's make a smoke signal with some damp leaves, Kim tells Barney. Then the soldiers at the fort will see it and come out to search for us. Kim and Barney are in Indian country. They are lost. Kim's smoke signal is seen by two Indian braves who are hunting in the forest. Depending on those Indians, that would actually be a good thing. But since this is a story about rescue, it is probably not. It's going to be a very, very bad thing, probably. Until Barney talks with the Indians. The braves creep up from behind. Barney bites their ankles, but Kim is captured. Let me go! Let me go! Kim yells. The braves drag him away, and Barney follows. Barney is not far behind when they reach their village. He will never desert Kim. Chief Running Deer comes out of his wigwam to look at the strange white boy. Mm. This is no ordinary white boy, says the chief. We must send him back to the fort. No, says the evil medicine man. We will keep the white boy here. Okay. M medicine men were never good or evil. Just the, They were just medicine men. Yes, but he's evil for the sake of yes. Barney's dream. Mm -hmm. As the great council of braves meets for a powwow, Barney creeps near. The braves are frightened of the medicine man and call for a trial by magic. Okay. The medicine man shakes his magic rattle. The braves are very impressed. Barney seizes the rattle and dashes away with it. The medicine man is furious. But now he shows his best trick. He takes a basket and shows that it is empty. Then he covers it with a gaily painted skin and makes strange signs. I'm just going to pause a moment to say that strangely painted skin looks a lot like woven fabric. When he removes the skin, two wood pigeons fly out of the empty basket. It's a dream thing, but I'm guessing it's because it's not of his culture that he would imagine birds that wouldn't be in that area. Yeah. Chief Running Deer unties Kim's hands. Now you make powerful magic, he says. You okay? I'm up for this. Oh, it's a trial by magic. And he has Barney out there. That? That expression? No, 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 no. I, I read fast. Ah. Kim shakes his head sadly. I can't make magic, he thinks. I wish Barney was here. Barney arrives just in time. He quickly trots over to Kim. Barney gives Kim a bubble pipe. Kim knows what to do now. Let us smoke a peace pipe together, he tells the chief. Never in all their lives have the Mohawk warriors seen such powerful magic as this. Bubbles that fly. Bubbles the color of the rainbow that float and dance. Barney gives the chief the pipe. He will have no more trouble from the medicine man. If Kim had the pipe, why does Barney give it to the chief? Dream. Dream. Have to keep repeating that. Mm -hmm. Also, people didn't know that much about other cultures when this was written, so this is all based on stereotypes. Yeah, but I'm saying Kim had the pipe, so why is Barney giving it to the yeah. chief? Yes, but I'm also talking about the... Yeah, the whole peace pipe and all the ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. Then the chief takes Kim and Barney through the forest. You are free, he says. Go. No wonder Barney looks happy, as the commander hangs the medal around his neck. A medal for bravery and a bone all in one day is a dream come true. All right. Interesting. Fun. A bit dated. A bit. It, it, it's a fun idea. It's kind of like the girl with the magic rocking horse from Two Minute Stories. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You dream, have adventures. They don't necessarily have to make sense. And for the time... It's sad to say, as late as the 1970s, this would hold true in terms of perceptions, but just think of Indian in the Cupboard series, mm. Lynn Reed Banks. I'm sure some of you have read some of those. I've at least listened to an audiobook version of the Indian in the Cupboard. I also remember Castle in the Attic. Yes, well, interesting concepts, but not necessarily culturally sensitive. 
This was, however, a fun read because, you know, you do wonder what your dog dreams about. I wonder more about what my cat dreams about. Well, that too, but cats and dogs, depending on theology, <laughs> that's a whole nother subject. So let's see, on the back cover we can read more about the Read Easy series. Excitement, fun, and much more. Step-by-step -step text and exceptionally fine illustrations build confidence and form good reading habits. The language is uncomplicated but maintains a high interest level. For children from six to nine years. Nine? Nine. By age nine, I was reading The Indian in the Cupboard and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe all by myself. Ah, you really liked books. Not all kids have the luxury to learn like that, like, uh, me. <laughs> My reading level is terrible. So, anyways, the four books shown on the back cover are The Ghost of Crumbling Castle, Tales of the Circus, The Cat Who Wanted to Make Friends, well, that one sounds fun, and Kim and His Dog's Dreams, which we just read. Yeah, that, that particular one with the cats is the one that interests me the most. Cats and friends. Mm. Friends who are cats. Mm. All right, this has been Kim and His Dog's Dreams from Lamplight Read Easy Books. Two stories written by Jane McMichael, illustrated by Richard Hook. I really like Richard Hook's style. I should, like, look up Richard Hook and lamplight reading to make sure I get the right Richard Hook, then see if he did any, did any more artwork. Yeah, other than with lamplight, because if you look at the other three covers on the back, the styles are very different. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did... Oh, I have eyes. I can read. He only did this one. He didn't do the other three. Hmm. The pictures on the back are large enough that I can read the authors and the illustrators. Jane McMichael wrote all of the books, but the other three have different illustrators. Hmm. I bet you they're commission work. Quite likely. Thanks again for listening. And thanks to Sami Chan for another fun book. Never know what we're going to pull out of the box, other than the fact that it's a book. And then the next thing I pull out is not a book, which would be hilarious, but is not going to happen. Unless the cat decides to jump in the box. She's not a box cat. It, don't wait for that to happen. So, no idea if these are still in print. We'll pr try to provide a link if they are out of print. We'll try to provide a link anyways. Just, you know, new versus used. Also, Ebates, because I can. And my Tumblr that has my hacks, not, not just Ebates, but my other hacks, also some recipes. Try the turnips. Even my mom likes those. <laughs> Thanks again for listening. Also, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.